I want to welcome again the New Fellowship Full Gospel Church Wednesday night service. I'm glad you joined us. We're expecting God to move in a mighty, mighty way. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this time. Heavenly Father, God, as we come to you this evening, God, we thank you and we praise you for another day. God, another opportunity, God, to come in to worship you, to praise you, God, and to thank you, God, for everything that you've done. Lord, and everything that you're going to do, God, because this is the day that the Lord has made. We should be glad and rejoice in me, God. We pray for all these requests, God. Those who are in the hospital, God, those who just need to touch from the master's hand. God, we pray for Sister Teddy's sister, God, God, that you touch her body. God, that you heal her, make her ever with hope, God. This is the day that the Lord has made. We should be glad and rejoice in me, God. We pray for all these prayer requests. God, I pray for our church, God, that you continue, God. The simple people in God, we thank you for what you're doing and God. We want to praise you and thank you for what you're doing and God. Father, all the praise and all the honor and all the glory of God goes to you, Father. It's in Jesus' holy name we pray.
Fish, do you feel like singing on the one breath away? You can't. <laughs> Bible 
talks on the phone. And you know, the devil is just coming in and he's telling us everything we do is all right. Mm. And, you know, you got saved when you're seven years old, <coughs> but you're on your way to heaven because your flesh is sin and your spirit is not sinning. Well, that's a lie straight from the pits of hell and smells like smoke. If you're sinning, you're sinning. And, and I don't care how you done it or who you done it with. Praise the name of Jesus. Sin is sin. If it was sin back in the old days in the Old Testament, it's sin in the new. Yeah. So we need to start uh, applying some sin. You know, if you come in God's house, and I'm just going to say this, if you come in God's house, and I can't sit down next to my brother or my sister, and I have hate in my heart, or I have jealousy in my heart, where I'm having strife in my heart. There's something wrong with me. And I need to get on that altar. Come on. We need to treat everybody that comes in the door of this church with the love that Jesus Christ has put in our hearts. Right. Come on. Come on. Come on. We got to do that. And we, you know, we can sit bun all scrunched up on a seat. And we can sit there until we die. And where we can get up on our feet and lift our hands. Yes. I see these preachers get up here and preach their hearts out. And everybody's just sitting. Does it hurt to raise your hand? Raise your hand there. I mean, is that a ball game? <laughs> Woo! You know, can we do that? Yeah, brother! Come on. Come on. We can do that. Well, these guys are preachers. Get your hands up. You tell them, Jesus. Preach them, Lord. Yeah. Bless them, God. We got to get behind them. Come on. Yeah. Woo! Come on. Your 
he don't hear it from you, Father. And he'll come and heal our name. Yeah. He'll come and make it out us. And it yeah. might not be, people. It might not be. Like the greatest things there ever was out here, we might still be in this fight that we're in. But the land he's going to heal is us. Yeah. He's going to heal us. And he's going to make us be at peace. Come on. With all this stuff, he's yeah. going to make us be at peace. Reach out when you can. You know, we heard the boys that are preaching to me. You know, I noticed this. You know, we'll sit here sometimes, and we just watch him preach, and we don't, we don't say, brother, preach it, brother. You know, when you hear me say something, and well, I'm like, if you really listen to what he's teaching you and telling you, it's coming right out of the Word. He's coming right out of the Word with it. And we need to start backing up our men of God. Yeah. We've got to back up our preachers. We've got to back up our preachers that's leading us in this church. We've got to stand with them. Yeah. And we've got to lift them up before the Lord. And I'm not talking about lifting them up in their body or whatever. I'm talking about lifting them up before God. Yeah. We're going to start praying for them. Yeah. Do you pray for people? Do you pray for the people that's in this church that's every day? Do you pray for the ones that send on these pews? Yes, Your people that's in this house, do you pray? Yes. Does, does it matter when you're living in your bed? Does God bring somebody to your mind? And he says, I want you to start praying for them. You know, start praying for them. Lift them up before God. Come it don't on. matter what they've done. It don't matter what they've done in this life. It don't matter what they've done. They could be a murderer. They could be a drug addict. They could be a drunkard. They could be anything. But God loves them. Oh, and He loves us. Yes, no matter what. Yes. We all sin and come short of the glory of God. We're not perfect people. None is perfect. Like they say, you're a hit out because you're a liar. Oh, and you need to get up here and repent. Yeah, yeah. You know, show people that you love them. Lift them up before the Lord. That's right. You know, it's, whew, I'm telling you, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm Thank 
when we can uh, work together. Chapter number three, I'm going to start reading from in verse number five. Can you find it safe, man? Hey. <laughs> Listen to what he says here. He says, I will come near to you to judgment, and I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers, against the adulterers, against the false swearers, and against those that oppress the hiring. In his wages, the widows, the fatherless, and that turn aside the stranger from the right and fear not me, says the Lord of hosts. Verse 6 says, For I am the Lord. Yeah. I change not. Yeah. Yeah. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Even from the days of your father, you are gone away from my ordinance and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, says the Lord of hosts. But ye say, wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even the whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And listen, and prove me now herein, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open a, open you the window of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there should not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground neither shall your vine cast your fruit before the time in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And look at verse 12. And all the nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. Hey. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, as we come to you today, we thank you and we praise you for your many blessings. God, we thank you, Father God, for another opportunity to come into your house to worship you and to praise you, God. And I thank you, God, for everything that you've done, God, and I thank you for everything that you're going to do. God, I want to thank you for touching God, this congregation tonight. I thank you for touching God, Sister Christian's body. God, from the top of her head to the soles of her feet, God. I thank you for what we feel in this house, God. I thank you for the anointing that we feel in here, God. I thank you for the music, for the songs. I, I thank you, God, for everything that you're doing. God, open up our hearts tonight to receive from you. God, if there's one missing tonight, God, out there, God, and are lost and undone, I pray, God, that today would be the day of salvation. God, I thank you for all your many blessings, God. God, I pray for those who are sick and afflicted and are listening. God, I pray, God, that you would touch them. God, this is the day that the Lord has made. God, we should be glad and rejoice therein, Father. Yeah. I love you and I praise you and I thank you for your many blessings, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Look at this passage of scripture that the prophet wrote in Malachi. And if you go, we start our read in verse 5, and it's talking about judgment and what God is writing. Basically, it's talking about his Israel. And how God that used to be their people. God used to be, a, you know, they used to be close to Israel. And God was right there with them, and they turned their back upon God. And God says, I'm going to come in, and I'm going to bring judgment. Upon Israel. Can I tell you, church? Hallelujah. God's going to bring judgment on the church. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We don't wake up and realize that God's still God. And look right here in this passage of scripture, verse number six is where I really want to start my message. It says, For I am the Lord, I change not. I can't get off of that right there, that one, that one verse right there, that one sentence. For I Yeah. <laughs> 
nothing in the change. God's not going to listen. He wrote this word of God for us to follow it. We got to follow it. The preacher, I don't listen. I know it's hard sometimes because our flesh wants to do the opposite of what this says to do. But if God says if we give our heart, soul, mind, body, spirit, and everything that we can to God, He'll make a way for us. He'll help us. He's not going to change. Hallelujah, glory to God. It's time. Hallelujah, glory to God. That we start seeking God and saying, God, what do you want us to do? direction do you want us to go? But God, I don't understand this. God, help me to make it. Let me tell you something, church. We need to get ready for the King is coming. He's not coming back after anybody. He's coming back after a church with that spot of blemish. But listen, it's time we get ready to see the King. Yes. Since I am the Lord, I change not. There's been many people trying to change it. Change this. Change that. Listen, if it was good back then, it's still good today. Yeah. Yes, it is. The word still cuts. Yes. It's sharp. It's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. Yeah. It cuts going and coming. What the problem is, when it starts going in and cut us, we want to stop it from getting, for him to clean us up. We say, Lord, clean me up. Then when he starts cleaning me up, we want to stop him. We want to say, hold on just a second. No. He said, Lord, cleanse me. Make me what you want me to be. Lord, put me on that potter's wheel. But don't stop with me. You make me what you want me to be. Make me God be what you want me to be. And I'm what anybody else wants me to be. And Lord, let's make me what you want me to be. Because Lord, I know you ain't going to change. But Lord, mold me into what you want me to be. The way you want me to be. Lord, teach me how to say. Teach me how to preach. Teach me how to do what you want me to do. Don't let me worry about what this will be. You know why we don't want to get on this? Because he takes us. And sometimes he has to just pick us, pick us up off of it, and slam us back down on the potter's wheel. Put some water on it, put the Spirit of God on it, and say, okay, we tried this once again, now let's do it again. Can I tell you the children of Israel, if they wouldn't cry and complain, they wouldn't have to be in the wilderness. They wouldn't have been walking all those many years. But they cried and they complained. Well, God, what do I got to do this? And Lord, you brought me out of bondage. Hallelujah, glory to God. And you want me to die here in the desert. Hallelujah, glory to God. Can I tell you, that sounds like the church today. But Lord, you want me to do this. But Lord, you want me to do that. And it just seems like I'm out in the middle and nobody loves me. Nobody cares about me. God loves you. God's just trying to prepare you to make you what he wants you to be. Not what I want you to be, but what does God want you to be. He says, I don't change. And he ain't going to change. He ain't going to change. Well, we're going to try to change him. And I tell you, he ain't going to change. We got these things over here on him. I don't know what... What do they call it? Kindle Operas? Yeah. Is that what they call it? I got that. Oh, praise God, I got that right. <laughs> but if you notice, they put candles in it. <laughs> okay, sister, I heard that. <laughs> but you got to understand something. They put candles in it. And they use it for different things. But you know what? When we try to change God, eventually, he's going to come in and start removing the candlesticks. He's going to start 
he's going to start pulling his power back. You wonder why the, the sinner can sit in church now and not have no conviction. You know why? Hallelujah, because we love to pray. We ain't been praying. We quit seeking God. Hallelujah, we don't. We say we trust God, but we don't really trust Him. He don't change. He still says, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. I change not. I don't know about you, but I don't want to. When the, when the death angel or when the Lord comes against me, I don't want to hear depart from me, you work of iniquity. I never knew you, but I want to hear well done. Thy good and faithful servant enter in. Yeah, I know this has been hard, but you've been right there with me. I know you don't change, but God changed me. Lord Jesus, help me. Lord, Lord put it on. Put it on whatever you want me to have, God. Make it what you want me to be. Hallelujah, glory to God. You wonder why you struggle. Why things are happening in your life. Hallelujah, glory to God. Not only are you trying to change statements, you ain't following what God says to begin with. Let me tell you something, church. Hallelujah, glory to God. God can't help you until you help yourself. Yeah. Amen. <clears throat> Think about that. He says, for I am the Lord God. I change not. Verse 7 says, even from the days of your father, you are gone away from my ordinance and not kept them. <laughs> Look what he says. Return unto me and I will return unto you. Yeah. How hard is that? He says, I ain't going to change. It's time we quit on doing our wickedness. It's time we quit doing our adulterous things. It's time we quit drinking. It's time we quit playing church. It's time to get back to the real thing. Yeah. And it ain't Coca-Cola. It's Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Yeah. He is the real thing. Yeah. He is everything. He's the Almighty. He's the Alpha, he's the Omega. Yeah. Hallelujah, glory to God. He's the beginning of him. But yeah. he ain't going to change. Hallelujah, glory to God. I understand now, David said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Why do we need anything else when we've got God? And even though David failed, hallelujah, God says, come on. Come on. Come back. What did he just say? Return unto me. I'll return it to you. How hard is that? Return it to me, and I'll return it to you. Stand up, Rick. I'm going to leave you alone, Floyd. <laughs> come unto me. I'll come to you. Stop. This is the way most people do this. When we get ready to get real close to God, and the, and the heat comes, and the fire comes, and the, and the anointing of God is drawing you to come, we'll want to step back a step. And God says, no, don't step back. I'm not going to hurt you. Come on a little closer. Come on a little closer. Come on and get into the fire. Come on and receive it. Come on and receive it. Come on a little closer. Don't, don't back up. Don't worry. Listen, you can't see. You can't see. But God says to come on a little closer. Quit backing up. Church, we're backing up too long. Let's quit backing up. And it's say, God, come unto me. I'm right here. I'm standing without stretched arms.
I just can't sing the night I'm part. I can't testify tonight because I don't know what to say. If you ever got up and just say, God, I, I'm believing you'll give me something to say. He says, take no thought what you may say. Just stand up. Yes. Trust me. Trust me. Believe in me. If I said it, we got to stand on it. Because if God be for me, who could be against me? Even though the enemy may come in like a flood, God says, I rise up a standard against you. Hallelujah. That's my kind of God. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every tongue that shall rise against me shall be good. Why? Because that's my heritage. That's what I, that's what I, I get. That's what the word says that I can have. I just 
just did it. I just did it. I just did it. What are you waiting on? Does it work?
five hours so I sit at the knee when I was God heal her body. God touch her heart. God from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. God to the tips of her hands. Yes, God, I speak healing into her body. God, touch her lungs, God. Woo! Hallelujah. Right now. Right now. Yes, God. Right now. Oh, touch my God, give her peace. Peace, so long. In the name of Jesus. Right now. In the name of Jesus. Somebody else. Don't wait. Don't put it out. To somebody else. God's in this house. He's waiting on you. You're lost and undone. Today would be a great day to receive God as your personal Savior. Today is the day that you can come in and be a part of the family. God loves you. God cares for you. Are they wanting here today? If he's knocking at your door, he's bidding you to open it up and come on in. Are they one? Are they one? God loves you. God cares for you. Are they one? Don't you give me a pack of money for me? Don't you, you, you bow your heads? And if you're listening out there today on Facebook, God's in the house, but He's also where you're at right now. God will reach down and He'll touch you across the airways. God said His hand ain't short, but they can't touch you. Your sick and body, God can heal you. If you need something from God, God is able to reach down and touch you. God can deliver you from the wiles of the enemy. God can deliver you from drugs, alcohol. But he's standing there waiting on you. God can heal your body. Don't put it off. Don't wait until tomorrow because tomorrow may never come for you. What you need to do is get out on your knees and cry out to God and say, God, I'm sorry. God, please forgive me. I've sinned against you. I'm sorry. you got to believe it in your heart. can't be just a mouth thing. It's got to be a heart thing. If you're here today under the sound of my voice in this building, with no one looking around, you'd say, Preacher, <coughs> pray for me. I need prayer. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to drag you by the hand. But if you're not so sure heaven would be your home, I would hate to walk out these doors without knowing. But there's a one in here that said, Preacher, Pray for me. I'm not for sure that heaven would be my home. It's not a game. Hell's real. That's what's wrong today. Preachers don't want to preach on hell because they're afraid of offending somebody. I'm going to tell you something. Hell's hot. Hell's real. There's people dying and going to hell every day. The Bible says that hell is enlarging itself. Shame on us for not telling everybody that there's a heaven and a hell. Or they want it and say, Preacher, pray for me. Don't put it off. Because you ain't guaranteed the next second. But you are guaranteed one thing that you're going to stand before a just God. 
you're going to give the cattle and everything that comes out of your mouth. It's my responsibility, and I'm a preacher's responsibility to tell you that the hell is real. Not only is there a hell, but there's a hell. Or they want it. Don't put it off. Don't wait. God's knocking at your door right now. They ain't nobody going to laugh at you. They ain't nobody going to make fun of you. But we'll pray with you. Or they want it. You can say, pray for, pray for me. Gracious Heavenly Father, God, I pray for those that are listening out here tonight. God, those most of all that are lost in and then I pray, God, that today would be the day of salvation. God, those who are God that used to know you but turned their back on you, God, I pray. God, that you would reach down and convict their hearts. God, those that are listening out there, God, all over the country, all over the country, across the seas, God, I pray. God, that you'd open up their hearts and their minds to look to you, the author and the finisher of our faith. God, I pray for those that are sick and afflicted that are watching. God, I pray that the action of the anointing of the Holy Ghost will touch them right now. And God, I thank you and I praise you for your many blessings. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you're out there listening, I'm thankful. I pray that you find a place to pray. Till we meet again Sunday morning, I pray if you need anything, text us. We pray for you. May God richly bless you our prayers.